What even does that mean? What does that mean? Like, why would he do that? It didn't make any sense. Hi, I'm Anne. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And as you can see, I've decorated for Christmas behind me and I thought it'd be fun to have like a festive background for the rest of the season. However, the next video I put out would not have this because I filmed that beforehand. The main reason I'm doing this video is because I just finished a book last night and I have so many thoughts about it that I needed to talk to you guys about it and I needed to rant a little bit. You know, it's been a very long time since one, I've done a dedicated book review and two, since I've ranted very long about a book. So Let's go. The book we will be discussing today is Ripper by Stephen Petrusha. I'm reading this for the Cloak and Dagger uh, Christmas readathon that's going on in December. And so the whole point is to read uh, mysteries in December, which are like my favorite genre that's outside of like classics are mysteries. I love mysteries. And I also love true crimes. And I've really gotten into serial killers. And no serial killer have I got into more than Jack the Ripper himself. I was fascinated by Jack the Ripper. If you don't know the true life story, Jack the Ripper was a serial killer in 1888 who murdered five canonical, canonical victims, but um, some people theorize that there were more victims before just vanishing. And we never learned the identity of him. He was never discovered or caught or sent to prison. So there's a lot of mystery around what happened to him. There's a lot of different theories that maybe he went to America and continued his killing spree there. So there's a lot of like victims that are attributed to maybe this is him, but we don't actually know. But so I picked up this book purely because I love the case of Jack the Ripper and I'm really fascinated by it, especially since now we are going on, what, 140 years plus after these crimes were committed. So it's probably very likely, unless, you know, something magical happens, that we will never discover who Jack the Ripper truly was. So I really love reading these fictional, um, reimaginings or imaginings of like what the solution who was Jack the Ripper and this one um was an interesting take on it so let's get into what exactly this book was um before we talk about some of my less positive views of it so this book is set in the 1890s I estimated it to be 1894 to 1895 um the winter of those years because it mentions that H. H. Holmes who is another uh very famous serial killer was just caught so he was caught in November of 1894 so I'm estimating this book to be set at the end of 94 into 1895. So this book follows Carver Young. He is a orphan living in this uh, orphanage in New York City in the 1890s. And he is very curious to learn about who his parents are. So he knows that his mother died either giving birth to him or when he was a baby. However, he has no knowledge of who his father is. So he decides to break into um, the office uh, where all the records of the orphans are kept in the orphanage and find out who his father is. And the only thing that he finds in his uh, record, his file, is a letter from his father to the orphanage. And here, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly read it. Um, but it says, shan't quit, but have to stop for now, boss. Don't think I've done and gone. Try not to miss me, yours truly. And if you know anything about Jack the Ripper, um, there are some letters that are believed to have been written by him that were sent to uh, newspapers to be eventually published. And they are known as um, the Dear Boss letters. There are some that are uh, are signed a Jack the Ripper, um, some that are called Leather Apron. He had a lot of different um, nicknames that the public used to refer to Jack the Ripper. These newspapers, he addresses them saying, Dear Boss. Um, and then he always says, Yours Truly. Uh, or he sometimes says, Yours Truly. And then Jack the Ripper, he signs one of them. So by the letter, like this is like page like five, by that letter, I was like, okay, so he, this, this young man, Carver Young, probably going to be turning out to be the son of Jack the Ripper. So we're kind of going to unravel from his perspective, the mystery of his father. So then um, the orphanage decides that they can't keep taking care of kids that are older than I believe 14 or 13. And Carver is 14. So he ends up, you know, 
he's going to be shoved out on the street, basically, um, having to make his way in the world, which is a whole different commentary because nowadays we have the whole issue of like foster kids um, when they turn 18, like they are out on the street on their own. And a lot of them aren't equipped to like live on their own yet. So that is a very controversial thing that I feel like is very relevant to the modern day as much as it was back then. Um, because, and at that time, it was 14, you know, now it's 18. So interesting commentary on that. But he ends up being kind of adopted or assigned to this man named Hawkins. Now, Hawkins says he is a retired um, Pinkerton detective. So the Pinkertons uh, were predominantly around during the Civil War. And um, they kind of uh, worked as a little bit of spies. They also did detective work predominantly for Lincoln and the North. Um, really interesting. I don't know that much about the Prinkerton Society, but it was a real thing. And this book um, looks at it as if there is a new Pinkerton Society that kind of revitalized in secret um, to tackle the cases that the corrupt police in New York City couldn't really handle. And so you have Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, who we all know as the president later, he was the um, commissioner of New York City at the time. You have Hawkins working kind of in tandem, but not working actually for the new Pinkerton Society. And Carver is, of course, his assistant. So as we kind of get to know, um, Carver and Hawkins uh, were introduced to an array of characters, whether people that are part of the new Pinkerton Society, you have a couple friends that uh, Carver had that are from his orphanage. There's a young girl who is like the main love interest to Carver, who gets adopted by this reporter and his wife. And then you have another boy who kind of is partially a bully and definitely didn't get along with Carver, who becomes the son of this like important man in the city. And so you have a lot of the characters you're getting to know, but above all, you also have these murders that are occurring in New York City that are very, very similar to murders that happened by Jack the Ripper. So you have this mystery and then you have Carver trying to figure out who his father is. Um, I feel like there's nothing more that I can say about it without giving away spoilers. So uh, let's talk about briefly what I did like and what I didn't like. So one of my favorite things that I really enjoyed about it was Carver's character. He's, he's very intelligent, and but he's also very young and impetuous, and he doesn't always make the best decisions, but you can understand where he's coming from, how he really wants to know who his father is, but when he kind of connects his tie and his letter to Jack the Ripper, he's terrified of this idea that, you know, he may be the descendant of one of the most infamous serial killers in all of history. And he's like terrified that what if I become like my father, you know, that type of thing. And I really loved that drive in him where like, he's always worried that maybe he won't be good enough to be good, that maybe he will succumb to evil. And that is a really interesting commentary that is discussed in this book. I also really enjoyed his friendships and kind of bickering with the two orphans that he grew up with. Delia is um, for also 14 and she is like the main love interest. And they kind of like solve certain parts of the crime together, which was really fun. And then you have Finn who is introduced in the beginning as being like a little bit of a bully. But as we see, see the story progress, he and Carver, and I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I don't think it's that much of a spoiler. He, they, um, their relationship changes to be more positive as they understand each other more. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I also, I also thought that the pace was pretty good. I was never bored. I saw a lot of the things coming way before they came. Um, but I, I enjoyed for the most part, like where the story took us in the pacing, um, the action scenes, the slower scenes where Carver is like solving small like riddles and mysteries and things like that. I enjoyed all of that. Now the bad parts. Um, and I will get more into my dislikes in the end because one of my biggest complaints about this book was the ending because I felt like it didn't make any sense. And maybe that is because of my intense interest for Jack the Ripper, but we'll get 
into that in a minute. So um, the ending was both obvious and yet it didn't make any sense to me. So like I saw it coming, but I was like, no way that is going to be the solution because that's a stupid solution. And it was the solution. It annoyed me in the beginning that Carver felt like very much of a passive protagonist. Like he was trying to be an active protagonist, but then it would turn around and be like, oh yeah, this is a test that was planned out for you by somebody else. And you were just doing exactly what they wanted you to do. So it didn't feel like he was actually progressing the plot, progressing the mystery. Now that changes. Um, I would say at the three fourths mark, he really takes control more of the narrative. But before that, I really struggled with that. Um, I also disliked a lot of the adult characters. I enjoyed Roosevelt. He's a really interesting character. Theodore Roosevelt is featured in this book and I really enjoyed his character. But for the most part, like I didn't like any of the merit the, the main adult characters that were featured, whether it's Hawkins, who is the detective that takes um, Carver in, or um, the new Pinkerton employees that he meets. He has two agents as well as the guy that's in charge of the new Pinkerton agency. I didn't enjoy any of them. I didn't like them. I didn't trust them. I thought they were creepy. And I thought they were really taking advantage of a 14 year old boy. So yeah, I had definitely a lot of issues with them. So now, now let's get to spoilers. And I'm just going to jump right in because I feel like my main issue with the book and why I ended up giving it a lot lower rating than I would have otherwise is because the ending wanted to have a cool twist. The thing is, Jack the Ripper targeted poor women, women of the lower class. That was his whole shtick back in London, okay? And so there has to be psych some psychological understanding and some rationale behind his decisions. And there's so many theories out there like, oh, he was like, there's one theory that he was a painter and uh, he was like obsessed with this like graphic art and he would draw this graphic art. And so a lot of people attribute that artist to being like Jack the Ripper because they were like, oh, he can't like draw that art without actually having like the inspiration of actually like cutting into a woman's flesh or whatever, which is a creepy theory. There's also the theory that like, um, the son of Queen Victoria was like super twisted and that, um, he like killed all these women because of like his twistedness and his inner demons. <laughs> I don't believe that one. And then of course it was covered up by the government because they didn't want Queen Victoria's son, you know, related to this weirdness. Um, so there's a lot of theories. And I think one of the things that really interests me about the Jack the Ripper case is the unknown, like trying to understand why somebody would do something just so horrible to these women. And yet this book doesn't try to understand psychologically what happened. Okay, twist ending twist. So Hawkins, who is the mentor of Carver throughout the entire book, turns out to be Jack the Ripper. And and weirdly enough, I thought about that early on because I really didn't like Hawkins. But I was like, no, that would be like the stupidest solution ever. There's no way they're gonna go there. But they did. So I feel like, you know, when you read mysteries, and you're like, the author is grabbing at straws saying what would be like the greatest twist of all time, without actually setting it up. And I feel like that's what this book does, is it feels like it wasn't set up at all that Hawkins is this eccentric, um, semi abusive to Harvard, uh, Carver guy, who's um, got a very tough past, like he's been in the Pinkertons for years. And and then suddenly he just goes to London and he murders these five women. Like, why would he do that? And as it turns out, all the victims that he's murdering in New York City are actually just a game he's playing with Carver. Um, he's putting all these like specific clues for Carver to follow in order to like solve the case. And why does he want him to follow that? Who knows? We never learn. In fact, Hawkins like reveals himself to be the big villain and then he just vanishes. He's never caught. This this doesn't even have like a sequel. This isn't a series. A and of course, it's also weird because like in London, Jack the Ripper killed like these poor women. There was big emphasis on that. And in this book, he's killing wealthy women in New York City. Why? We have no explanation for that. Who knows? Jack the Ripper was a cruel individual that was um, 
motivated by passion, the way he brutally tore apart these women, you know, not to get too graphic, you know, this is some man that has intense anger inside of him. And yet Hawkins is presented throughout this book, even in the end, to be very methodical and planned. This is a fun game to him. This isn't someone who's like doing these passionate things. And yes, he's writing these letters to the police, but it's more like a fun idea almost. Like, no, this, this Hawkins is very methodical. Jack the Ripper is not that the same. <laughs> like there, psychologically, there is no way that Hawkins could be Jack the Ripper. And, and of course the ending just ends with a cliffhanger with Hawkins getting away. And I would get if this was the first book of a series, but it's not, it's a single book. So yeah, I went from like really enjoying this book in the beginning to really disliking it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I should be done with my rant now because I've been talking for way too long. But I'm curious, um, have you read this book? Would you read this book? I, I'm curious, do you enjoy learning about Jack the Ripper as well? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great week. Bye. Mm -hmm.